If you think we're on the run We are the boys who will stop your little game We are the boys who will make you think again Cause who do you think you are giving Mr. Hitler If you think old England's done Mr. Brown goes off to town on the A21 But he comes home each evening and he's ready with his gun So who do you think you are kidding Mr. Hitler Just stop on the van as quick as you can. Good afternoon, Captain Manorin. Hey, I am off looking forward to this weekend exercise. Pike. Sir. How many times have I told you not to wear that scarf on parade? Yeah, well, Mum made me put it on, you see. <laughs> she said if we were going to be sleeping out all night, she didn't want me to catch a cold. We're not likely to come to any harm in this weather. It's midsummer. Ah. Hello, sir. <laughs> What have you got in the suitcase? What? Oh, just a couple of rugs and my uh, pyjamas and things. Rugs and pyjamas? Connective service. I never heard of anything like it in my life. Now, look here, Wilson. As my sergeant, you're supposed to set an example of toughness. You're supposed to be... <laughs> you wearing scent? Scent? Yes, scent. No, it's just a little bit of eau de cologne I put on after I shaved. <laughs> Put scent on after you shave. Yes, yes. I never heard of such a thing. <laughs> well, Mum likes it. She says it makes him smell nice. Be quiet. I'm surprised I've never smelt it before. Well, you see, I only use it on the weekend. You see, it's frightfully difficult to get. You're decadent, Wilson. That's your problem. <laughs> decadent. Be wearing suede shoes next. <laughs> get it washed off before anybody else smells it. <laughs> Don't catch people like Fraser stinking of scent. <laughs> what's, that, what's that smell? <laughs> oh, that's just a wee drop of embalming fluid behind the ear. <laughs> it keeps, uh, keeps the mosquitoes away. Good afternoon, Captain Manorin. What are you carrying that eider down for? Uh, well, we should be out all night and my sister Dolly thought it might help keep me warm. You can't move swiftly across country loaded down with that. He couldn't move swiftly across country stark naked. <laughs> well, sir, all present and correct and wearing to goes up. Thank you, Corporal. Just a minute, just a minute. What's there? All that? All that? That's so as everyone knows what I do. <laughs> what do you do? Well, WC. War correspondent. <laughs> Get it off at once. Yeah. And you can't bring that camera on parade. Well, uh, well Mr. Cheeseman, he's been taking a photo of me for featuring me in an article in the Gazette. Yes. What about this for a title now? Corporal Jones, battle scarred veteran. Yes. It, it doesn't mean I'm all mangled and mingy, you know, so it's, it means mentally scarred, sir. It means you're balmy. Just <laughs> I'm not barmy, don't you? All right, all right, all right. Sergeant, for goodness sake, fall them in. We've wasted right, enough time as it is. All right, better to fall in. Three ranks, please. As you can. Come on. Right. Cheeseman, cheeseman, not with the camera. Oh, there we are, Pop. Right, uh, but, but what shall I do with this, sir? Oh, give it to me. Give it to you, right, sir. Turn ten, sir. Turn uh, president correct, sir. Stand at ease. <laughs> now, for the purposes of this exercise, we are a patrol of commanders behind the enemy's lines. And our task is to rendezvous with a highly important secret agent who has been dropped by parachute. We shall then escort the secret agent to his secret destination. Mr. Speaker, sir. I should like to volunteer to be that very important, highly secret agent, sir. Yes. Well, thank you, gents. I've already decided who the highly important secret agent is going to be. Excuse me, sir. 
It's not by any chance going to be you, is it? Yes. <laughs> How did you know? Oh, just a guess. <laughs> Miss Manreen, are you really going to jump out of an aeroplane wearing a parachute? Of course I'm not, a stupid boy. It's a hypothetical parachute. Well, I shouldn't use one of them so they're not safe. <laughs> Our task is, A, to see that we're not spotted from the air as we move across the ground, so we should be wearing camouflage. JHQ, on the other hand, will be doing their best to capture our secret agent. Who is highly important. <clears throat> now, they will do this by trying to divert us from our task with the use of counter-agents. Now, counter-agents, as you probably... <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm so sorry, sir, but uh, I thought as it was such a beautiful day, I thought while you were chatting away over there, I take advantage of this glorious sun and try and get myself a little bit of a tan. <laughs> yeah, at breakfast, Mum said he was looking a bit peaky. <laughs> How will we know who these counter-agents are? Hmm? We won't. They'll be using all sorts of disguises. Well, sir, how important are their counter-agents? Are they just important? Or are they highly important? Well, that's not important. <laughs> I'm sure you would be the most important of them all, sir. Oh, yes, indeed. There's no one more important than you, Captain Maymorin. Yes, indeed. <laughs> we had a highly important secret agent out in the Sudan when I was there. Till them fuzzy buzzies got hold of him. He won very important after that. <laughs> I wouldn't like anything like that to happen to you, Captain Manrin. Tell them what happened to the Eastgate platoon last week. What was that, sir? Tell them... What your friend Fruity Buckmaster told you. Oh, yes. Yes, rather funny, really. Yes, you see, um, only last week the Eastgate uh, platoon did the same sort of exercise and, uh, and Captain Square made himself the highly important secret agent. <laughs> he would. Pompous ass. <laughs> <laughs> the Raven got an R when he was captured. <laughs> <laughs> and made a complete mess of the whole thing. That was Georgie's... Laughing and sneering at poor old Captain Square and the East Gate platoon. Yeah, hooligans, that's what they are, ruddy hooligans. You don't mind helping Captain Square then? There's, there's a pound each in it for us. Oh, I do, I do it for nothing. Any enemy of Mannerings is a friend of mine. <laughs> right then, get ready to move off. Load up. Now, remember what Captain Square said? We've got to make sure that Mannerings mob are spotted by that aeroplane. Right, come on. I'm going to put the men in the fixture. <laughs> Come on, Jones. Cut! Line the men up for a short brief. Hey, good job! <laughs> Cut the double! Line up for your short briefs! <laughs> Come on, look like that! Pour him out! Now, listen carefully, everybody. Right, as the officer says, do as the officer says, listen carefully! Come on, listen carefully! <laughs> <laughs> Men are now listening carefully, sir. <laughs> now, I am the highly important secret agent. I've just been dropped by parachute. Now, we've got to be on our guard against <laughs> the GHQ counter agents. And as we don't know what disguise they'll be using, we're going to ignore everybody whom we don't know personally. Is that clear? Right. We're ready to move off. <coughs> Their car's broken down. Rubbish. And obviously counter agents disguised as nuns. <laughs> I think they'd use something a bit more original than that picture. Ignore those nuns, men. They come mildering. They've got women's faces. I don't care what sort of faces they've got. Keep going. I say, our car's broken down. Could you gentlemen give us some assistance, please? Take no notice. Oh, please, help us. <laughs> Rogue, you know, sir. Look your front room. <laughs> Please! You know, Sister Mary, since this Nazi parachute scare, life is becoming quite unbearable. <laughs> Hello. There's another of them. Another, <laughs> another counter-agent. 
I'll bet a pound to a penny there's a wireless receiver in that pound. Oh, really, sir? <laughs> well, I'm not taking any chances. Jones. Yep. When I give the word, surround that pram. <laughs> when he gives the order, you surround the pram. Not a bit spanish, sir. No, no, I don't think that'll be necessary. <laughs> Stand back, come on. All right, lady. Set the pram, Wilson. Is there a wire set in there? If there is, the battery's leaking. <laughs> now, we've got to get across this field and into those woods without that plane spotting us. Here he comes again. Get down! How do we know if the plane spots us, sir? If he sees us, he'll drop bombs of yellow dye. All clear? Right, come on! Here he comes again. Down, everybody, and three! They haven't been spotted so far, Mr. Rogers. Hey, but he soon will be. Quick, spread that sheet out. Go on. Oh, come on. Uh, hurry up. Come on. Wait round. Oh, oh, the hey, they're over there. Over there. They're over there. <laughs> Wait! I think that man's calling to you, sir. Perhaps he's one of them counterfeit agents, sir. You're right, Jones. Take no notice, man. But won't he draw attention to the plane, sir? Oh, what a blessed nuisance. All right. Yeah. Down, everybody. Freeze. What do you want? I, I must speak to you. Well, don't come any nearer. And pretend you're not talking to us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Mr. Mannering. He's got officer's clothes on underneath that white coat. Uh, aye. It looks very suspicious to me. I think he is one of them counterfeit agents. Are you listening? Yes. Get on with it. And, and don't look at us when you're talking. Um, I, I work for an experimental laboratory run by the, the War Office. We uh, train animals for secret war work. <laughs> Likely story. <laughs> what sort of animals? Monkeys, I suppose. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, one of them's escaped. Not, not really a monkey, more of a, an ape, a gorilla. Watch out for it. It's dangerous. There's a loose gorilla about. There's a loose gorilla about. All right. Oh, an ape. <laughs> what that do? Wait a minute. Uh, sheer rubbish. <laughs> Might be training him to fight against the German. Don't talk piffle, boy. If there are any gorillas within a thousand miles of here, I'll eat my hat. Come on. Forward. Fall out for smoke. Oh. Start taking your camouflage off. I'm fed up. Fed up with mannering I am. Always making a monkey out of me. Oh, no one's trying to make a monkey out of you, Mr. Rogers. Come on, shut up. Get off. Keep it up, man. You're doing very well. Come on, I can hear voices. Voices! Halt. There they are again, sir. Ghostly voices. Well, stop rolling your eyes about, Fred. <laughs> right, sir. 
I can hear them as well. Now listen. There it is again. Someone's in trouble. Mr. Speaker, could be some of them counterfeit agents, sir, trying to divert us from our purpose. And if it's a trap, you're the one they're after. You better stay here and I'll go and see what it is. Very well. Take Jones's section with you. All right. But right. at the double, round the captain, a ring of steel, boom! <laughs> <laughs> While we are gone, they can't lay their dirty hands on you. Help! Uh, help! 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 Oh, look, Uncle Arthur. It's only Mr. Rogers and the Verger. How dare you divert us from our purpose? Oh, come on, let's get back. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't leave us. Yes. Don't leave us. It was a monster, all horrible and airy. Now, <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we are then. Come along, all of you. Here we are now. This is it. You should be warm and cosy here for the night. Yes, thank you very much indeed. I uh, say so it's most kind of your wife to give us that delicious supper. Yeah, well, that's oh, I haven't tasted eggs and bacon like that for years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a real mill. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help feeling that we ought to have offered her some payment for it. Then. Uh, uh, well, uh, I was hey, hey, son, goodbye and bless you. <laughs> <laughs> It's two more gentlemen come to join you. What? Hey. Oh. What do you want, Hodges? Oh. Uh, fed up with you following us about all over the place. Why don't you go home? How come with that horrible airy monster about? No oh, rubbish. Yeah, you watch out, sir. They're up to no good, sir. What's the matter with them? Never seen Hodges groveling like that before? That's what I said. Really quite disgusting. Right, now let's get settled down. Yeah, let's do that. And class, sir. Yeah. Well, don't think Mum would like us sleeping in this straw. There might be all creepy crawly things in it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, silly Frank. I mean, a little spider won't do you any harm. Oh. Frankly, I, I think it's really rather, you know, rather cosy here. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's not bad at all, is it? It's, it's not like straw. Yeah. I mean, it's all soft and cosy, isn't it? <laughs> straw gives off a sort of a uh, kind of animal heat, you see. <laughs> You all right, Mr. Godfrey? Oh, 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 yes, thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, this straw is quite comfortable, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, indeed, it's real cosy, man. It's just like a feather bed, isn't yeah. it, man? Yes, indeed. You don't think there's any truth in that story about the escaped gorilla, do you? Oh, no, no truth at all, Mr. Godfrey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jones. You've been a great comfort to us all. That's all right, Mr. Godfrey. I'm just a plain, common-sense talker. Now, you have a nice little rest now. That's right. And class, that. Mm. Uh, no. What? What is it, Frank? Tell me a story. <laughs> well, that's silly, Frank. You're, you're too old for that sort of thing, you know. You used to tell me stories. Why have you changed? Well, you see, you're grown up now. Mum says you tell her stories, <laughs> and they're always the same one. <laughs> well, Frank, yeah, just just go to sleep, will you, please? What does that boy want, Wilson? Oh, sir. Well, you see, he uh, wants me to tell him a story. <laughs> Can't help feeling that he's slightly retarded. <laughs> she's his mother, you see, sir. I mean, she really spoils him to death. Yes. She's been a widow for too long. What that boy needs is the firm hand of a father. Yes, I quite agree, sir. Mm. I wish I could find somebody. <laughs> Half time mother, eh? <coughs> did, did he ever hear the story uh, of the old empty barn? No. Would he like to hear the story of the old empty barn? Oh, yes. 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 Uh, yes, it might put us in a good mood before we go to sleep. Pet! 
attention, everybody. Mm. <laughs> Private Fraser is going to tell us the story of the old empty barn. Carry on, Fraser. Right. Well, the story of the old empty barn. Well, there was nothing in it. There was nothing yet. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. God <laughs> <laughs> You know, Wilson, hmm? over the years that I've come to know the members of this platoon, I've grown quite fond of them. But I can't help feeling sometimes that I'm in charge of a bunch of idiots. <laughs> The Mannerings platoon seem to be doing very well. well. Lieutenant Wood and I have got a pretty elaborate scheme to upset them, but uh, we haven't had much luck so far. Well, now, don't you underrate Mannering. He's got lots of guts and he's very tenacious. Where are they now? Uh, they're spending a night in a barn just uh, here. Lieutenant Wood is keeping an eye on them. He's here, sir. Well, get him in then. Come in, old boy. <laughs> <laughs> For heaven's sake, take off that ridiculous mask. Of all the harebrained schemes I've ever heard of, this takes the biscuit. It seems to be working, sir. Oh, we've still got tomorrow morning, sir. Hmm. Well, have we found out who the highly important secret agent is? Yes, sir. It's Captain Mannering. Well, you've got till 1100 hours to uh, separate him from his men and capture him. Don't you worry, sir. I'll capture him if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> time, Mrs. Wilson. Well, the time. Oh, uh, Papa State, sir. Now, you have to deliver me, the highly important secret agent, to GHQ by 1100 hours. Right, sir. Right. Mm -hmm. See the map, uh, Fraser. We worked out the route, sir. We'll follow this road here, through the wood, pick up this road here, follow it till we get across the bridge, bear right, keep right on, and that'll bring us to GHQ, sir. But that's miles out of our way. No, 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 no. What we want to do is take a direct route across country. You might get lost. I shall use a compass. Hmm. Do you think it's wise? <laughs> Quite capable of using a compass, Wilson. I take a bearing. Mm -hmm. Thus. All we need to do is follow a bearing of 94 degrees, and it'll bring us direct to GHQ. Oh. All right? Oh, no. <laughs> the sun's over there, man. It's as plain as the nose in your face. Well, I, I may have been a few degrees out. But... 180, to be precise. <laughs> right back where we started. But what are we going to do, Mr. Manning? We've only got half an hour to deliver you to GHQ. All right, Jones, all right, all right. It's all not right. all right. Straight right. down the road. Be quiet, be quiet. That way, that way. Now, GHQ is only five miles away, and it's a direct road. Yes, but you'll never be able to make it in half an hour, sir. Yes, we will. We'll go in the van. But you're not allowed to use our transport. Ah. I'll use that motorbike. That's not our spot. But yes, but I mean... Uh, uh, Wilson, I... please, do not split hairs. I'm the highly important secret agent. There's nothing to say that I can't use my own initiative and commandeer a motorcycle. Right, the rest of you will follow in the van. Jones, get the men aboard. You heard what the officer said? Embark! Come on! Embark! Right, you drive the van, Wilson, and you, Jones, come with me on the bike. Right. Where do you think you're going, my motorbike? I'm commandeering it. Clear off. Here it is. 
What's this? It's a hypodermic syringe. What on earth for? To eject the gorilla with. He won't hurt it. Just put it to sleep. Are you mad? No, he's from the RSPCA. I telephoned him about the escaped gorilla. Yes, uh, now, when you've put it to sleep, just send for us and we'll do the rest. Yeah, he's another of them counterfeit agents, so they never stop trying, you know. I've never heard such rubbish. Even if there was an escaped gorilla, how could we get close enough to inject it? Yeah, well, that's your problem. Now, I'm a very busy man. Good luck. We're all ready, sir. Ah, now we'll go on ahead, Wilson. You follow, will you? All right, sir. Now, we're using this bike, Hodges. You can follow in the van. Now, look here, Napoleon. I don't know what your game is, Hodges. But you're obviously trying your best to ruin my chances of finishing this exercise. And how you expected us to believe that story about an escaped gorilla, I'll never comprehend. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they're trying something else now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you say GHQ was, Sir Fraser? Just up the road here. Manwin's just gone past to the monkey on his back. You, come on, move over. Go on, get up. Go on, move over. Come on. Quick, get the hypodermic and stick it in him. You're <laughs> in the monkey, right, sir? It was a, an escaped gorilla after all. See, I was right, Uncle Arthur. Mm. They are training them to fight the Germans. Yeah. Can't they believe it? What a story this is going to make for the paper. Yes, indeed. I don't think we ought to get too close. He looks awfully fierce. Perhaps I ought to shoot it. No, don't shoot. Whatever you do, 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 do don't shoot. That's funny. I thought gorillas came from Africa. <laughs> Why is he speaking English? <laughs> I am English. <laughs> Who are you, then? Lieutenant Wood. And it didn't work. Thanks for the lift, ladies. Don't mention it. It's such a change meeting someone who thinks we're real nuns. Congratulations, chaps. You've completed the exercise successfully. Hooray! Now all I have to do is to get a report from your highly important secret agent. Where is he? He's over there. Tiptoe. <laughs> Through the tulip. <laughs> In the shadow. Yeah. 